Good afternoon and welcome. In keeping with the theme of today's conference, I'd like to share a quote from rabbi and author Yehuda Berg. Always run after the opportunities to create peace between people. Find ways to bridge differences. Because as long as one person continues to feel separation, we will always all feel it. I'm Jean Crane, I'm President and CEO for the Twin Cities, and I am so pleased to be here and welcome all of you to this fabulous gathering where everyone in the audience is truly dedicated to bridge differences and work together for the greater good. The work carried out by this nonprofit se sector in Minnesota is absolutely critical, and I personally want to thank each and every one of you for the work that you do every day. I hope everyone in this room is familiar with the Bremer Bank owner, the Otto Bremer Foundation. And, you know, I hope that that familiarity comes through the fact that you see the foundation in their grant making to nonprofits in your communities that happens by virtue of Bremer Bank's profits being distributed to our owner, the Otto Bremer Foundation. There is no, thank you. There's truly nothing that makes me prouder than to share the Bremer Bank story, which is really all about the giving of what our clients do to create profits of the organization that we distribute to our owner, the Otto Bremer Foundation. I'm just 100 days into my new role at Bremer, but I know a number of you enjoy relationships with our colleagues, and that, that has gone on for many, many years. And I am honored to know that many in the audience are Bremer Bank clients, and I thank you for your business. We truly appreciate the opportunity to partner with you and find ways to create financial solutions that allow you to do the good work that you do in our communities every day. Bremer has spent time developing nonprofit resource specialists really who understand the challenges and the unique needs that nonprofits have. So we've paid special attention to building products and service expertise in order to meet those needs. So our team truly enjoys an opportunity to be a resource for you, to be an advocate for you, and really sometimes on occasion just provide a, a helping set of hands. And on that note, I'm proud to let you know that, you know, lending a hand for our employees becomes a pretty natural event. Uh, last year alone, we had more than 100,000 of our employees donate their personal time in their communities. I have been so impressed to see this just natural commitment, this interest, this energy and compassion that our staff shares to get involved and lend a hand where needed and it truly was part of my decision making in joining the Bremer team. I'm also proud of the relationship that Bremer enjoys with the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits. Bremer has been recognized as the preferred banking partner for MCN, and that partnership can benefit everyone in this room as it gives you access to MCN member discounts for special nonprofit banking products and services. All these partnerships, all these relationships really help, you, help us to deliver our vision at Bremer, which is building healthy communities through partnerships with our clients. So many thanks for all of you for partnering with Bremer. We look forward to continuing our work with you, for continuing to build bridges and making differences in our communities and finding ways to always work together for the greater good. And now I am pleased to introduce this year's nonprofit award host, Tricia Cummings Kaufman, Executive Director for East Metro Women's Council, and David Nicholson, Program Director for Headquarter Headwaters Foundation of Justice. Tricia and David.
Well, good afternoon and welcome. My name is David Nicholson and I am from Headwaters Foundation for Justice. And I hope you enjoyed this conference this year. I've been having a wonderful time. For me, it's always powerful as the whole community comes together, both the common and the unity. We come together and that's what makes Minnesota great. I think this is actually Minnesota's great get together, not the State Fair. Trisha Cummins Kaufman and I are honored and pleased to announce this year's winner of the Nonprofit Mission and Excellence Award. Trisha? That's right. David and I are thrilled to be here today to honor some amazing organizations. One year ago, our organizations were honored on this very stage. Headwaters Foundation for Justice was recognized for the responsive philanthropy with the Mission Award. And I am still so proud that my own organization, East Metro Women's Council, received an Excellence Award. This afternoon, we are excited to present the stories of six Minnesota nonprofit organizations that are dedicated and committed to their missions and their communities. Minnesota Council of Nonprofits and Maps for Nonprofits are honored are honored to are, <clears throat> excuse me are honored to award these nonprofits today and recognizing their important contributions and i think it's important for us to take a minute and think about these contributions in context to achieve great results we all know that it takes great leaders like you out there we also know that those great leaders fit with inside amazing community support and are also fueled by the staff and volunteers. So as we honor these organizations and we recognize their contributions, we really honor and recognize them all. While there are hundreds of amazing organizations and impressive ones that fill this room today, we're taking an opportunity to stop and reflect on six, six organizations that illustrate exceptional world-class nonprofit that exists in Minnesota. I hope you're inspired as I am. We have two groups of awards to present today. The Nonprofit Excellence Awards are based on MCN's principles and practices for nonprofit excellence, looking at everything from an organization's governance, planning, financial management, and fundraising practices to its strategic alliances, transparency, and accountability. The organizations receiving a Nonprofit Excellence Award are strongly aligned with each principle and practice in their own organization's work. Their application for this award took the full participation of their board and applications were reviewed by, in detail by a blue ribbon panel who named these two organizations as excellent. As a 2011 Excellence Award winner and one of this year's uh, judges, I can attest to the high bar that has been set by these amazing organizations. So I have the honor of uh, introducing the first awardee. So within our midst, there's a gem. And it reminded me really of George Orwell in Animal Farm as he wrote, anyone who challenges the prevailing orthodoxy finds him or herself silenced with surprising effectiveness. Today we honor an independent publisher who has the courage to amplify the voices of those who dare to speak their truths. In addition to the courage, the publisher connects its passion and purpose by using the principles of nonprofit effectiveness and excellence, engaging its board, using planning and disciplined approaches in collaboration, it creates an atmosphere for great authors, great books to be developed, nurtured, and brought into our wonderful community. The recipient of the 2012 Nonprofit Excellence Award for large organizations is Grey Wolf Press. People have asked us, you know, what makes a Grey Wolf book Grey Wolf? That if we could articulate exactly in advance what we were looking for very precisely, that would be putting ourselves ahead of our writers. I was reading a lot of Grey Wolf poets before I was very conscious of who published them, and I started to kind of pay attention to 
who made these books? How did they come into being? And a lot of the, the poets that I really loved were Grey Wolf poets. If we were going to grow, if we were going to really get a little bit of flexibility in the budget for more risk taking, for more growth, to take, go to the next level as publishers, which is what we had said we were going to do in our strategic plan, we needed additional funds. So we said that that money the, was going to increase sales and increase our backlist and bring us to the next level we would have a new kind of success on the list. And startlingly, it ha that is what happened. Because we've published Jane Kenyon and William Stafford and Tess Gallagher and Linda Gregg, Dana Joy uh, for many years, we're seeing the fruits of that as younger writers are wanting to come and follow in those footsteps. Having published three books with Grey Wolf, I now feel like this is my home. 75% of our individual donors are local. They understand that six publishers control about 80% of everything that is published, that some of the risk-taking is going on in the small nonprofit arena. You know, I think as somebody who makes poems, you're very conscious of what the book looks like and feels like, and I think that the books that they do are also very beautifully done. Well, there's quite a lot of very important, interesting literature that's being neglected by the larger houses, and that would include poetry, translation, short stories, essays that are hybrid, which seem difficult at first sight to sell, and or indeed are difficult to sell. I think the reason why we stayed at the Black is connected with our ongoing disciplines and sound practices. There's just a, a constant practice always of looking behind, what did we do, did we do what we said we were going to do, and where is what we are currently doing taking us, what are the ramifications? Adding translation to the poetry list has allowed us to include poets like Tomas Tronstromer, who won the recent Nobel Prize in Literature, Peace Prize winner Lou Chabot, and we're getting ready to publish a, a new book uh, by Saadi Youssef, an uh, extraordinarily important Iraqi poet and one of the best known and most important writers from the Arab world. Those books provide something that broaden our list considerably and I think publishing international writers is incredibly vital for Americans to have the experience of reading other art forms from other cultures. Congratulations to Grey Wolf Press for demonstrating nonprofit organization excellence. Accepting the award for Grey Wolf Press is their director and publisher, Fiona McRae. Thank you very much. Good tip for packing box, uh, books. I thought, do you see that box when it goes on the books upside down? Never seen that. Um, my thanks to the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits and MAP for this award for excellence. It is such a meaningful, indeed excellent award for us to receive here in our local community. At Grey Wolf Press, we are used to our authors getting trophies of various kinds, Nobel Prize, Pulitzer Prize, National Book Award nominations. And that is all well and good, but this award is very much one for us, one for what we as a staff and board have achieved. So I'd like to start, therefore, by taking this opportunity to acknowledge what wonderful stewards and leaders our board members, many of whom are here today, if they'd like to wave, have been for the press over the years. You. And I want to send out a hearty thanks to the whole Grey Wolf staff in the Minneapolis office. They work with infectious enthusiasm and commitment, and it is this whole team that has contributed to our excellence. Of course, though, what we do in, the, what we do in our work is for, in the service of our talented literary writers, whose poems, novels, and essays make a real contribution to the larger world and culture by stimulating all of our imaginations. As one of our writers argues, poetry's greatest task is not to solidify groups or get the right people elected or moralize or broadcast, 
It is to foster a necessary privacy in which the imagination can flourish. Then we may have something to say to each other. Words themselves create reality through music and incantations. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. The exuberances of rhyme, its irrationalities, bring forth new realities. The world arises from naming, and naming itself is a product of hilarity, invention, fortuitous accident, the elsewhere and else who, the imagination. And I do believe that imagination is a key building block in building bridges to others, which is one of today's themes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fiona, Fiona, and thank you, Grey Wolf Press. Your work is inspiring and it truly reflects the excellence of the award. As a native of small town Minnesota, I know the importance of feeling at home and being welcomed into home. This next award goes to a small organization with a mighty big impact. This organization ensures that the new Americans coming to their community feel welcome and at home. The new Minnesotans have an opportunity to see the beauty of relationships by being welcomed into their community, by being able to share their cultural gifts, enriching the whole community. This Winona-based organization demonstrates the alignment to the principles and practices of the Nonprofit Excellence Award. The judges appreciate their outstanding energy of the organization to engage in practices of, that are about welcoming. And again, we engage in that right here around the table. They hosted friend raisers. They invited community partners to learn more about each other's communities. And most importantly, they took the opportunity to build the relationships to have board members from the new and emerging communities and bring them together as one. On behalf of all Minnesotas, Minnesotans, I wanna thank you and for reminding us that it's the host not the visitor who makes room at the table. So I'm proud to announce the 2012 Nonprofit Excellent Award for Small But Mighty organization is Project Fine. Go, Angel, come on. Angel. Pues un poco de problema, pero pues gracias a Dios salí adelante con el programa. I came in this country as a refugee 19 years ago with two children, two bags, and a lot of hope. Project FINE is a non-profit organization that is fully dedicated on integrating newcomers through education. We are only one in our Winona County that is uh, focused on helping refugee and immigrants find and build better life. There's many organizations, but once in a while you run into an organization that gets things done for people. The relationship between Winona State and Project Fine is so interwoven. We are involved sort of at the, at the higher levels with um, you know, myself on the board, with other people who are involved in presenting workshops and seminars and uh, training sessions and so on in conjunction with Project Fine. We have our students who work with the College Connections program and who help, the, and help mentor these young people and who help, um, help them see that there is a way and that they can in fact have a future beyond what their parents might have uh, been able to have. Project Fine is a small nonprofit organization with um, six employees and without strong working board and support we would not be able to serve 2,500 individuals as we did last year. The board is uh, very committed and truly involved in all aspects of our organization. Apply to Luce, Guya, Nyajta, Habitat, Fahimerita, 
Hard to find since I worked with them over many years. We have built partnership and and uh, uh, collaborations with them, and that's the unique thing about the organization that we don't just stay around um, our organization, but we're really trying to reach out to partnership with different uh, organizations, different businesses in the community as well as community members itself. Pretty fine. This is a very, very good the program. I consider Project Fine the best because it's the most well run, it's the most um, inclusive in what it does and in its mission and it's truly and it's fun. We have a lot of fun as well. Congratulations to Project FIME for demonstrating that small organizations can achieve big results. Accepting the award for Project FIME is their executive director, Fatima Saeed. Good afternoon, everyone. It's so good to be with all of you here that make every day the difference in Minnesota. I want to thank the Minnesota Council of Nonprofit and MAP for Nonprofit for honoring Project Fine with this award. As you saw in the video, we are a small nonprofit organization with a clear but challenging mission, a small staff, and extraordinary community support. Today, I would like to highlight just a couple of practices that have made us distinctive and resulted in this honor. I must speak first of our board of directors. They are very dedicated to our mission and strive for excellence and transparency. Our directors truly are a working board. They work in five committees and bring their gifts and abilities to help address the challenges and accomplish our mission. Project Fine would not be the organization we are today without uh, the commitment of and work of our board of directors. Several years ago, our board was searching for ways to become more effective. I came across the principles and practices for nonprofit excellence, as well as the charity review standards councils, and shared them with board. The board embraced these standards and made them part of our operation. Second, I would like to highlight the importance of forming partnership and working in collaboration with others. Everything that we do in Project Fine, we do in partnership with someone. Because of this partnership, Project Fine is able to provide a wide variety of programs and services. With board support, we have built relationship with our community businesses, government and civil organization, educational institution and service providers. Because we are a small nonprofit organization with no continued funding base, building partnership and collaboration with others had helped us work toward our mission. Partnership and collaboration have enabled us to serve over 2,500 individuals last year. I'm very grateful and very happy to be here today to receive this award on behalf of Project Fine, the board of directors, staff, partners, clients, and entire community that help us do this job. I also would like to thank and, um, the MAP and Minnesota Nonprofit for honoring us with this and want to thank them for everything that they do to strengthen nonprofit across our state. Tried to steal his thunder. <laughs> Congratulations to both Nonprofit Excellence Award winner. Let's give a big round of applause for them again. It's these organizations that were chosen by the Blue Ribbon, Pan the Blue Ribbon Panel of Nonprofit Leaders. So please join me in thanking the excellent award, awards panel for a job well done. Also here to honor the four recipients of the Nonprofit Mission Awards. These awards honor the commitment of organizations to meeting their missions through innovation, 
advocacy, anti-racism initiatives, and responsive philanthropy. Almost 100 organizations were nominated for these four awards, making it very hard for the dedicated committee to choose this year's finalists. Thank you to those committee members for the many hours they spent and for the hard choices they had to make. But the organizations being honored today were chosen ultimately by all of you, the members of the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits. MCN members voted and selected the four outstanding organizations that we're recognizing today, and I can't think of a better way to be honored than by your own peers. Let's also take a moment to thank everyone here who took part in this process by nominating an organization and by voting. The first mission award is presented to a foundation that has responded to the growing prevalence of sex trafficking of girls in Minnesota with an amazing and successful campaign, Minnesota Girls Are Not For Sale. Spearheaded by, a, a, spearheaded by leaders from the community who have experience and expertise in sex trafficking, the foundation has redefined how society sees, understands, and responds to this issue. And I think that's an important thing for us all just to think about. Because this is the, the, um, it's the holy grail of social change, is when we as a society change the way we think, see, and understand an issue. They have shifted this issue to ensure that women and girls are seen as the victim of crimes. And that has led to some amazing results. Women now and girls now have housing, treatment, appropriate response by law enforcement, and most importantly, the rest of us are being educated and engaged and informed to end the trafficking of girls. I'm proud to announce the 2012 Nonprofit Mission Award for Responsive Philanthropy goes to the Women's Foundation of Minnesota. I think uh, a profound change has happened in our community. A year ago, if you asked anybody about sex trafficking in the Twin Cities, they would tell you that they probably didn't think that that occurred, and it was probably involving uh, somebody from other countries coming here. Actually, I'm a homegrown, raised Minnesotan. I was in church every Sunday and had Bible study. I got involved in prostitution at the age of 15. I was raped by a pimp and two of his friends. I was held captive for 24 hours. I had cigarette butts put out on me. Um, I was stabbed in the side with a knife, and I was raped repeatedly throughout that whole 24 hours. Well, the average age of entry for uh, girls getting into prostitution is between 12 and 14 years old. And when they run away, within 48 hours, they are approached either by a pimp or by a, an individual who wants to use them for sex. We were told by our grantee partners, advocates, law enforcement, and others that there was a growing problem in our state of girls and our children being prostituted. And so we took action. We learned more, and the first thing we did was convene those who held the most expertise and knowledge on this issue. And we worked with them, and together, we created the Minnesota Girls Are Not For Sale and our campaign goals and outcomes. So this initiative has really been driven by those most directly involved through cross-sector leadership. Leaders from law enforcement, county attorneys, elected officials, advocates, the faith community, the corporate community, and others in the philanthropic community. When we're dealing with children who are being prostituted, uh, it is wrong to look at them as delinquents or criminals, and what we ought to be doing is to start looking at them as victims of crime. And once we do that, uh, we have a whole different lens in which we interact with these children. Can you imagine that right now in Minnesota, there are only two beds for children who've been prostituted? That's something that we're working on changing. People have to understand that no child chooses prostitution, and this is not a victimless crime. This is a horrific act of violence against our children, 
we need to engage and mobilize the public until we have zero tolerance for this issue of buying and selling our children for sex. It's a human rights violation. It's not okay. And we're saying that, and we're helping women to understand that. And we're gonna end it for girls in Minnesota. Here to accept the award on behalf of the Women's Foundation of Minnesota is the President and Chief, President and CFO, Lee, CEO, <laughs> Lee Rober, Rober Becker. Hello everybody. Well, first I want to thank MCN and MAP for this great award. We're just thrilled. And I accept this award on behalf of our bold staff and incredible board of directors that we have. I accept this award in honor of all of our partners who have built this campaign together. And I accept this award with the hope and the knowledge that we will end the sex trafficking of our children here in Minnesota. <laughs> You know, I wanted to bring all of our partners up on stage with me, but uh, I was told there wasn't enough room on the stage, and they're probably right. But I thought it was really important that everybody can see just exactly what it's taken to build this campaign and have the kind of collective impact that we're having here in, here in Minnesota. So I'd like those of you who've been involved to stand and keep standing. Those of you who are on our board and staff, our committees, grantee partners, funding partners, don't be Minnesota shy now. <laughs> Elected officials, prosecutors, law enforcement, thank you so much. You get a good example of what's involved. And this award belongs to all of us, and thank you. We invite you to join with us in this process. Thank you so much. The recipient of this year's Anti-Racism Initiative Award has directly served more than 17,000 young people of widely varied socioeconomic backgrounds. In the spring of 2011, this theater commissioned an original musical that told the stories of three young people dramatically impacted by bullying directed at them based upon their physical appearance, ethnicity, and sexuality. The show launched a community conversation about bullying through many media outlets, including the St. Paul Pioneer Press, WCCO Radio and TV, TPT's Minnesota Original, Southwest Journal, Lavender, Women's Press, and Minnesota Parent. The 2012 Nonprofit Mission Award for Anti-Racism Initiative goes to the Youth Performance Company. I think it's a theater company that's what people think we are, but we're really a family. The love and the care here is like nowhere else. You really feel the arms coming around you, you know, like a hug, a big old hug. Kids can sit and read about the civil rights movement or talk and read about bullying, but it's really different for them to see a story take place on stage. We've made a commitment as an organization to do a story every year where young people are in a role of making a change. We did a whole trilogy of plays around the civil rights movement, all original work, all around uh, students standing up and doing something about what was going on. Sometimes the audiences are a bit taken aback, but you see that there's just a lot of processing going on, a lot of identification and hopefully a lot of victory in feeling that their story has been told or that they've been empowered to tell their story. I've been a bully before, I've been bullied, I've been a bystander and not say anything, and I think now if I see someone getting bullied or someone saying something not nice, I say something. The Anam story is uh, about this Muslim girl who gets bullied for being a uh, Muslim. And these two kids are just antagonizing her, pushing her around. A lot of Somalian girls would come to the show, and there's this part where my bullies rip off my hijab, 
and it's so hard to hear them cry in the audience, but to see that they're so thankful for someone portraying that on stage, because no show has ever portrayed that kind of thing on stage, it's just so rewarding. You can do theater that is meaningful, that has great intention, that can be used as a tool to teach and to serve. And I think for many of our young artists that have been involved with projects like that, the long-term effect for them has been that you know they've made some choices in their own personal life to kind of carry that forward. Even as adults, some of our deepest hurts are connected to something that we experienced as a young person. And young people being able to engage in their own pain or injustice openly uh, really strengthens them, it allows healing to take place, and it empowers them then to move on. Here to accept the award on behalf of the Youth Performance Company is their founder and artistic director, Jacqueline Knight. Yay! <laughs> we are, um, wow, this is, this is fantastic. On behalf of Youth Performance Company, I wish to thank the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits and MAP for this distinguished award. We are deeply honored and humbled. From civil rights to bullying, Youth Performance Company has a long history uh, and commitment to bringing forward social justice issues that we know will promote discussion and reflection, cultural competency, appreciation of diversity in our communities, and most of all, we hope, will inspire a change a change in our future. Every day at around 4 p.m., loaded with backpacks and book bags, the future bursts through the doors of a youth performance company. The future is very loud. <laughs> they want to make sure that we know that they are here and present and accounted for. The future is filled with questions, many questions about our past. Like, why did African Americans not have the right to vote? How and why were schools racially segregated? Or how could any country stand by and let so many people die in the Holocaust? It is our responsibility, all of us here, our responsibility to help the future find the answers to those difficult questions. And those answers will hopefully lead them to a greater understanding of the present and the tools to change things for their own future. In our production of Mean, tough questions were asked. Is it okay to make jokes because of a student's culture and faith? A young Muslim woman is bullied and targeted for her beliefs and is inspired by her teacher to stand up for herself and courageously be proud of who she is. As Nelson Mandela said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. May we all have the courage and the love to inspire our future, to shine their light so bright. Thank you. The next award honoree is near and dear to my heart. I started 26 years ago working with runaway and homeless youth. This organization is a trailblazer that not only houses and supports youth ages 16 to 21 in Hennepin County suburbs, but it also integrates those youth and young people 
into their homes and into the communities. They, they, they've chosen a different model than the traditional brick and mortar placing and housing of, of youth. The program is focused on dignity and focused on empowerment. It partners with young people to connect with adult volunteers who host them in their home. These men and women provide the young people with a deep connection, stability, and relationships it takes to transition from young adult to adult in our society. Congratulations this year to the nonprofit mission award recipient in the category of innovation, Avenues for Homeless Youth. I was very frustrated. I felt like I wanted to just drop out of school. On any given night in the state of Minnesota, there's about 2,500 youth that are out on the streets or don't have a place to sleep. We have enough shelter and transitional housing beds to support about 15% of the youth in the state who are homeless. And so that means 85% of the homeless youth are fending for themselves. I was pretty much couch hopping from one friend's house to another, going to work, coming from school, and trying to find a place to sleep. They're at great risk of exploitation, um, especially sexual exploitation. One approach has been to build a building and house young people. This program is a little different in that it's a collaboration coming together um, where there's not a lot of personal agendas or uh, organizational agendas, but it really is focused on youth. Suburban Host Home Program is a truly community-based uh, response to youth homelessness. Uh, we recruit, screen, and train adult volunteers from the community who then open their homes. The youth get to pick the hosts that they're interested in meeting and then pick where they want to live. And so they've got a vested stake in this relationship. In a lot of cases, when you take a youth and put them into a system where they don't really have a choice, there's a lot there that doesn't go right sometimes. I love the guys. They are so, they're like God's angels to me personally, because like when I needed someone the most, that's when they step up. We were a little nervous, I was anyway. Yeah, but me too. We actually got along quite well right away. So these young people now have someone who, who remembers their birthdays. Um, who remembers them on the holidays and who cares about how they're doing. I think we're blessed by having Martha Lynn in our house. She's a delight. <laughs> I became stable. I focused on school. I realized when I was placed, my grades started getting better in school. I was able to find a decent job. That made, it made a difference to me. We've got young people who have amazing potential. They just need a chance. They just need a home and a stable life and caring adults. I am happy. I have a place where I can call a home. This will change the life of a young person. It will change the life of the hosts. And by extension, it, it really does change the community. The guys are always there supporting me. They talk to me as a daughter and they treat me as a daughter. So it's like, yeah. Deborah Loon from Avenues for Homeless Youth Executive Director is here to accept the award on their behalf. Martha Lynn is difficult to follow. She really says it all, doesn't she? It's always an honor to talk about Avenues and the homeless young people we support. Every young person who walks through our doors has faced unbelievable challenges, and in most cases, they, they have literally survived the streets. With just a little bit of stability and support, we get to watch them become thriving young adults. Why do we believe in the host home model? Because it is so much more about housing, more than about housing. This is not charity. This is about building relationships, it's about building community. It's about living together, sharing, building bridges. Rocky, it's about solidarity. <laughs> we really want to thank the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits and MAP for Nonprofits for this award program and for this award, for running, shedding the light on the great work that the Minnesota nonprofit community does. 
We especially want to thank the youth and the hosts who participate in this program because they really do the, work, the hard work. I want to thank the many volunteers and the partners who make the host home programs work so beautifully. This includes our Action Council members and our many partner agencies. I want to thank my amazing program managers. Their commitment to, the, to supporting the hosts and the youth is amazing. And finally, my board of directors, our board of directors, uh, for believing in this model and supporting significant expansion. We actually have three host home programs, the GLBT host home program, the Minneapolis host home program, which we're just starting, and the suburban host home program in suburban Hennepin County. If your community is interested in this model and in learning more about possibly starting a program, any of us up here would be more than happy to talk with you about it. And we are always recruiting hosts. So if you're the teeny littlest bit interested or inspired, please come see us. Thank you so much. Our final award today is being presented to an organization that's taken a leading role in moving the state toward the elimination of homophobia and toward full equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. This award is for advocacy, the act of giving voice and arguing in favor of a cause, an idea, or a group whose interests would often not be adequately represented otherwise. Along with local leaders and 73 organizations and individuals, this nonprofit's mission is to ensure that same-sex couples and their families have equal rights and considerations under Minnesota law and support the passage of statewide legislation that will strengthen existing bullying and harassment laws in Minnesota. The recipient of the 2012 Nonprofit Mission Award for Advocacy is Outfront Minnesota. Outfront Minnesota exists to really make sure that our state is a place where no one faces violence, discrimination, isolation, or any adversity based on who they are and who they love. And to do that work, we need thousands of people to join us. We need thousands of people to see themselves in this movement for equality and to speak up and to join others and to organize like crazy and make our state the place we want to live in. Gay people are your neighbors and your brothers and your sisters and your fathers and your mothers, and they're, we're just like everyone else. I think of us all as grassroots community organizers. The infrastructure that Outfront has, hundreds of volunteers and people that are willing to work for Outfront uh, will uh, all of a sudden come into action. We work to lobby our local elected officials and city councils and school boards. We sometimes work on a county level, and then of course we go to the state capitol as well. We really owe a lot of our uh, freedom and protection and, and security to Outfront. The Safe Schools Coalition is making sure that our high schools uh, remain safe places for all students, um, regardless of age, race, color, or sexual orientation. Coalition work for us is critical to advancing equality. And one example of a really healthy coalition is the Minnesotans United for All Family Coalition. There's over 600 organizations involved right now in the effort to defeat the anti-marriage amendment. We are, are standing on the shoulders of what Outfront has done in, in the last 25 years. We are going to be making sure that every single person in the state of Minnesota understands the choice that's going to be on the ballot in November. The constitutional amendment that's on the ballot that would limit the freedom of same-sex couples to marry, that amendment has has really inspired more and more people to join in the effort. You have tens of thousands of volunteers who are setting aside their life in some ways to really be able to defeat this amendment. I'm happy to now be here working with the Minnesotans United uh, fighting for the same goals that Outfront has been trying to push for the last 25 years. I can't imagine uh, 
Minnesota without out front. We really want to work ourselves out of a job. We really do. We want to see the day when an out front Minnesota organization doesn't have to exist because people really see that they can be out and open about who they are and who their family is and who they love and that lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people do not face any adversity because of who they are. Please welcome Executive Director of Outfront Minnesota, Monica Meyer. Hi. Hey. Um, on behalf of Outfront's dedicated and amazing, incredible board and staff, uh, I'm so honored to accept this award today. Um, we'd really like to extend our thanks to the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits and MAP for Nonprofits and all of the members and member organizations who voted for us. I'd also like to acknowledge all of the nonprofit organizations in this room who work every single day to make a positive difference in the lives of Minnesotans and make our state a, a great place to live. Uh, nonprofit heroes, thanks. Uh, this year, Outfront is celebrating our 25th anniversary. Our programs and services encompass, pu encompass public policy, grassroots organizing, anti-violence work, legal advocacy, and education and training. Along with our coalition partners, we are working to end discrimination in our school's laws and local policies. We help schools, corporations, nonprofits, places of worship, police forces, anyone who will listen, uh, become welcoming and equitable places for LGBT people and their families. And we're also working uh, to end bullying in our schools and make them safer for all students. In May 2011, the legislature passed a constitutional amendment limiting the freedom to marry for same-sex couples. At about midnight on the day it passed, Outfront Minnesota and Project 515 launched Minnesotans United for All Families, uh, which has now become the biggest grassroots campaign the state has ever seen. And I always say it's the biggest, I know, right? I always say it's the biggest campaign for love our state has really ever seen. Um, so on Tuesday, Minnesotans will go to the polls to vote on whether or not we should limit the freedom to marry for same-sex couples and whether or not we should restrict voter rights. Not everyone agrees on, this on these issues, um, but here's where we stand. Uh, these two amendments don't help create a more just economy. They don't strengthen our democracy. They don't address racial, economic, or educational inequities. They just shut more and more people out of our collective future. If passed, they will prof profoundly damage who we are as a state and hurt a lot of people and families. These amendments were not, they, they were not meant to improve anyone's lives. Uh, they were really meant to divide our communities and divide our state. But we believe Minnesotans truly value freedom and fairness. Together, we can end discrimination in our state and create a place where everyone, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people and their families are guaranteed the same rights, opportunities, and freedoms. We have the power to make our state a place where you are free to be who you are, love who you love, and live without fear of violence, harassment, or discrimination. And we can defeat these amendments. We just have a few more days to talk to our friends, family members, coworkers, people in our congregations, everyone, <laughs> and talk with them about voting no. Let's defeat these amendments and let the world know Minnesotans truly support equality and justice for all. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Monica, for that example of, of advocacy right here on our behalf. So we're at that time. On behalf of the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits, for MAPS for Nonprofits, the Awards Committee, Minnesota Council of Nonprofit members who did the voting, thank you. 
a well-deserved congratulations to all of our award winners today. As we close the ceremony, I want to challenge you personally and organizationally to have the audacity, the passion, and the compassion of this year's winners and for you to see yourself on this stage next year. To do that, it's easy. Nominate yourself by applying for the 2003 Mission Awards Excellence. Nominate another. We recognize the good work that happens. We're the first ones to see it. We're the ones who really know it. So go ahead and nominate those colleagues of ours. And to do that, go to Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota nonprofits.org and I look forward to seeing you on the stage next year. And like every year, what wonderful award videos we have this year. If you want to see them again or share them with your colleagues, MCN and MAP will be posting them at the award website minnesotanonprofitawards.org. Thank you to Emergence Pictures for producing these wonderful videos and for helping us tell the stories of these outstanding nonprofits. And now a little mixed message. So we want you to go. We have another round of, of ses breakout sessions today. But stick around at 3.30. We have a reception right over there, overlooking the ballroom. And if you missed any uh, sessions or if you're conflicted because you wanted to go to both sessions, don't forget the materials and handouts are on alliedforaction.org. For Thank you again.